In this video, I will be talking about the advanced product quality planning. Basically, the five core quality tools are APQP, PPAP, NSA, FMEA, and SPC, which we will try to understand in depth in the lectures to come. These tools are very important in today's scenario because not only they have been used and practiced in um, automotive industry, but also other industries too, such as medicine and pharmaceutical industry, electronics, cosmetic industry, etc. So if you are quality auditor or if you want to learn or participate in the quality audits too in the future, these topics are of core importance. The summary is, these topics are very important for the quality management, production planning and improvement, and quality improvement too. So what is Advanced Product Quality Planning or APQP? It is a procedure or a framework to develop products in the industry. Basically, it is widely popular in the automotive industry and airlines and then later other industries too started understanding the importance of APQP and started using the concepts in their workplace. It is a structured process aimed at ensuring customer satisfaction with the new process or with the new products. We can say that it is a process that ensures that the voice of customers are effectively built up in the process or the product that we are manufacturing. So why APQP or why should we go with the planning with APQP? If we plan for the quality, we can make the action plan. For example, we can pre-plan if any failure in the system arises. This helps us to draft the action plan for the worst case scenario also. Quality planning also helps us to reduce the cycle time lead time and other manufacturing parameters. It comes with additional benefits such as reduction in complexity. APQP is a structured approach. It reduces the complexity of the product quality planning for customers and suppliers so that all stakeholders can understand the planning process and requirements for the planning easily. The other benefit is improved communication. It provides a common language for communication with all the parties. It helps to communicate the product quality planning and the requirement to the subcontractors and ensures all steps required to achieve customer satisfactions are met. It also helps to reduce the quality problem and helps to reduce the risk at the product launch. And as I mentioned earlier, it helps us to reduce the cycle time for the product launch. If we talk about the history, first, the Ford Motor Company published the Advanced Quality Planning Handbook for Suppliers in the early 1800s. After that, the concept of APQP was widely utilized by other industries and organizations like Ford and GM. To ensure that APQP protocols were followed in a standardized format, the APQP guidelines were established in the early 90s. APQP was first introduced in 1994 by AIAG as APQP Reference Manual. The full form of AIAG is Automotive Industry Action Group. Before the development of APQP, the automotive manufacturing planning was different for each industry and location. So sometimes that created a confusion in among the internal customers and the processes. APQP provided a common framework for planning, developing, and producing a product. Now, let us discuss when it is must to go for APQP or adopt APQP. APQP facilitates for the communication in the entire supply chain, be it the manufacturer, supplier, or customer. However, there are two key important areas of use of APQP. Number one. New product introduction. You might have heard whenever any new product or a new design or new specification is set for a new product line, we use APQP. The main reason for this is APQP focuses on risk and risk areas and take actions on risk so that we can help minimize the rate of failure. APQP uses a risk-based approach for all areas. 
be it process design, product design, packaging design or making any improvements. Number two, when there is a product or a process change. Whenever any changes in design or features of the product or whenever there is change in the product or process outside that product development, we need to adopt the APQP. It helps to assure that the change is managed successfully by preventing problems created by the change. Let's take a short quiz on this one. Under which of the following scenario adopting APQP is must? As I mentioned earlier, APQP can be used by any type of manufacturing activities for improving products or process, but then we have to select if we can use APQP in the following scenario. The first scenario is a tire manufacturing facility wants to adapt the new feature of tubeless tires for one of its product line as per the demand of customers. The company found that the customers prefer the tubeless and self-healing tires. Should the company go for APQP approach for planning and development of new production line? Yes or no? Take your time. You can pause the video now. Okay, let me reveal the answer. The correct answer to this question is yes, we can go for the APQP approach because we see here that the entire product is changed from tube tires to tubeless. So for this, the process will also have to be entirely different. It's always better to adopt APQP if we have new product introduction. Let's see the second scenario. Kiran is a production manager at Gunjan Juice. He observes that the low yield of the product is probably due to the leakage of a pipe joining the filling tank to the storage tank. He needs a quick fix. Should he go for the APQP approach? Yes or no? Okay, let me reveal the answer. This time the scenario is completely different. APQP is not a tool of quick fix, but an organized approach of improving the quality of the product and processes. Probably it's better if he goes for the root cause analysis to find the causes of the leak and fix them. So for this time, he needs a quick fix to prevent the leak. The answer is no. Finally, we have reached the implementation phase part of APQP or Advanced Product Quality Planning. Generally, there are five planning stages of APQP, but with the introduction of pre-planning or phase zero, some books also mention that it has six stages. These stages are pre-planning or phase zero, as some refer, phase one or planning and program definition, phase two, product design and development, phase three, process design and development, phase four, validating the product and processes, and phase five, launch, feedback assessments, and continual improvement. APQP is also a continuous quality improvement process which follows the PDCA or plan, do, seek and act cycle. As I mentioned before, there are five phases of APQP and this can be categorized into one of the four cycles. Let us look these activities or phases in the diagrammatic timeline form. Here, this picture shows the timeline for phases of APQP. The phases are mentioned inside the color box. The hearing shows the milestone of the product development. First of all, we have a planning phase which extends from concept initial approval to program approval. So the planning phase runs continuously as the milestones of the projects are reached. Let us look the first phase. Planning phase is the phase which links customers expectations to the requirements. So, when the customers acquire new product or feature in the product over the existing one, the project must undergo planning phase to understand the customer's need and expectations that they want to see in the product. There are different activities going on in this phase, which are known as input. The output of the planning phase is what we get after going into this phase. Generally, the output of the planning phase are the input of the product design and development and the output of the product design and development is the input of the next phase or the process design and development. 
Some of the activities or inputs done in this phase are finding the voice of customers through the market research and historical data, making business and marketing plan, product benchmarking, which means setting some quality and productivity parameters for the product and process. And it may have many other activities ranging from reliability studies to risk analysis. So what do we get doing all these things in the planning phase? Or what are the outputs of the planning phase? Let us see some of the outputs. We get estimation of the design of the product to be built. We get preliminary bill of the material, which consists of information on costs and features on every items of the product to be assembled and manufactured. We get an idea of preliminary process flow after planning any special characteristics that needs to be built in the product. There may be different inputs and outputs or scopes of the planning phase. You don't have to memorize all these because I'll be giving you hands out which you can download from the resources or from the description. For now, just understand that summary of the planning phase is to help plan for understanding the core elements to be built up in the product or processes so that it can meet the voice of customers. Phase 2 Product Design and Development The outputs of the phase 1 are the inputs of the phase 2 or the product design phase. But it's not like the phase 2 starts after the phase 1 is completed or phase 3 starts after phase 2. Here in the diagram 2, we see that the phase 2 product planning starts before the end of phase 1. As some of the aspects of the planning phase are completed immediately, we are ready to move to the product and process design and development phase. The product design of the phase 2 has the principal focus on product design and product feasibility assessment. After phase 2 is complete, we have design review and verification of the completed design. We have completed design or FMEA or failure modes and effect analysis. We have material specification and equipment requirements in our hand and we must also have established control for creation of the product prototype. Basically, we use design failure mode and effect analysis as a quality tool in the phase 2. Phase 3. Designing and developing the process for product manufacture. The phase 3 looks for the planning the manufacturing process so that a sustainable process can be developed, keeping costs, specification and quality in mind. So the outputs or say the outcomes of this phase are by the time we complete this phase, we have a complete process flow diagram, we have quality specifications of the operations, we know the finished product packaging requirements and also by then we have a completed process FMEA or process failure modes and effects analysis to identify and also plan for the risk involved in the process. Basically, as a quality tool, we use process failure mode and effects analysis in this phase. Phase 4 is the phase for validating the process and the product. This is a phase where we validate or test for the working of the product or the manufacturing activities. Some activities that is conducted in this phase are performing production trial runs, confirming capability and reliability of the manufacturing process and product quality acceptance criteria, testing product output to confirm the effectiveness of the deployed manufacturing approach, etc. Basically, as a quality tool, we use statistical process control or SPC, measurement system analysis or MSA, and process capability studies in this phase. Phase 5 is the phase for launch, assessments and continual improvement. After all the activities are over, the full-scale production launch occurs in this phase. Emphasis is given to improving the process by reducing process variance and continuous improvement. We also give emphasis in collecting the customer's feedback and data in order to improve the quality and efficiency of the product. So what are the outcomes? After we complete this phase, we have an improved manufacturing process with high in build quality with lesser variation and improved customer satisfaction. Basically, some of the quality tools used for these phases are 
RPN or risk priority number where we focus on reducing it and also we use the AD problem solving method for any problem to be improved in the future product or processes. So these are the five phases of APQP. Note that APQP or advanced product quality planning is now being used in pharmaceutical, medicine, cosmetics, electronics and every other kind of manufacturing businesses.